We now continue with our sixth installment of the Palm Beach Playbook, where we bring you the very latest campaign updates, courtesy of official Team Trump members Tommy Pegott and Taylor Rogers. So let's dive in. It was a scene for the history books, worthy of the most important election in our nation's history. Tens of thousands of patriots all gathered together in deep blue New York City, united by love of country and determined to save America by electing President Trump back to the White House. The New York Post may have said it best, it wasn't Madison Square Garden, it was MAGA Square Garden. The energy was unmatched and unreal. From his proposals to unleash American energy, to ending taxes on tips, overtime, and social security benefits for seniors, to enacting an America First trade agenda, President Trump has the agenda and the platform to foster a new American golden age. President Trump is also uniting all Americans, while Kamala Harris, in her desperation to win, relies on smears and lies, disgusting lies, to cover for her disastrous record, especially when it comes to American manufacturing. Under Kamala Harris, the nation lost 34,000 manufacturing jobs in just the past two months. And after nearly four years, she created less than 25,000 manufacturing jobs when taking into account jobs added back after the scandemic and massive downward revisions. In fact, manufacturing has been on the decline ever since she became vice president, as the industry sees some of the fastest contractions on record. And on top of all of that, real wages remain lower than when she first took office as workers struggle under the lasting pressure of the price hikes fueled by her policies. And to make matters even more disturbing and even worse, she now wants to double down on her failed track record by waging a full-scale assault on manufacturing and the American auto industry. Recall that the Biden-Harris administration finalized its strictest ever rules, so to speak, for tailpipe missions, essentially forcing a de facto electric vehicle mandate onto Americans. Based on a draft version of this rule, the Harris-Biden administration's emissions regulations will eliminate 117,000 auto manufacturing jobs all across the United States. And if Kamala has her way with a gas-powered car ban, Michiganders will lose, at minimum, nearly 40,000 jobs. It's quite an economic toll. And who is the biggest beneficiary of this EV mandate? Communist China, which already controls 85% of the processing of those critical materials which are needed for the manufacturing of electric vehicles worldwide. And as if mandates weren't enough, she also wants to undermine American competitiveness with massive tax hikes. In fact, she plans a 33% tax hike on all domestic production, the largest capital gains tax hike in history as well, and a wealth confiscation tax on unrealized capital gains, and a massive tax on national energy. Compare that to President Trump, on the other hand, who created nearly half a million manufacturing jobs in his first three years in office, and who actually has a plan to bring jobs back to this country, back to America. He's going to rebuild the middle class. President Trump's Made in America tax rate will cut the business tax from 21% to 15% for employers who make their products right here in the USA on American soil, and charge a tariff on companies that don't. President Trump will also cut energy prices in half within his first year in office. He'll cut 10 existing regulations for every new one that goes into place, and he'll put a 100% tariff on every single automobile manufactured by a Chinese plant in Mexico. And the only way they'll get rid of it is by building a plant right here in the United States of America. So it's pretty clear, a vote for President Trump is a vote for Made in America. And now let's take a look at Team Trump's fantastic new ad called Never Quit. When I first came into office, I cut taxes more than any other president. We have created 7 million new jobs, and it led to a growth like we've never seen before. We developed the greatest economy in history by far. When I left office, it changed. Inflation destroyed the lives of so many people. Interest rates went from 2% to 10%. Millions of illegal immigrants, traffickers, and drugs coming into our country. Our country has gone to hell. So I made a decision to run. 
We're going to make America great again, greater than ever before. I will fight for you with every breath, and I will never let you down. I'm going to fight like a dream. Trump is literally putting his life on the line and he's willing to risk it all because he loves this country. He is strong, he is fearless, and he is what this country needs right now. Our cities will be safe, our streets will be clean, and our border will be secure. We can't allow our country to be destroyed by politicians who will put their own power ahead of the interests of the American people, our freedom, and our future. The left told me to hate Trump. When you cut through the lies, you realize the truth. American families were better when Donald Trump was president. We were safer, wealthier, and stronger. So if you love this country, if you want to stand up and fight for the future of our nation, you must re-elect Donald J. Trump. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. And real quick, I just want to point out quite an amazing coincidence because our executive producer Cameron is actually in that advertisement. There he is in Calexico, California back in April of 2019 before he even worked at OAN doing his part to support our beloved president. So maybe it's not a coincidence after all. Perhaps it's fate. But either way, great work, Team Trump. And anyway, joining us now to discuss is Tommy Pickett, the Director of Strategic Communications for the Republican National Committee and the Editor-in-Chief of the Palm Beach Playbook. Tommy, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me on. So I love that advertisement so much. What do you make of that? Well, it's fantastic, and it really lays it out there, doesn't it, that President Trump is fighting for all Americans. And think of everything that he's put on the line to make sure that he is fighting for all Americans. It really is inspiring, and it's inspiring to all Americans that want to save this country to join this movement, to come out and vote, to make sure that we're being involved, to make sure our friends and family is getting out to vote, to make sure we're all doing our part to really save this country. And he also lays out his policies there. That's the closing argument Americans want to see. That's the closing argument President Trump is presenting, that he will fix what Kamala Harris has broken. And we've discussed it before, but what's Kamala Harris's closing argument? Doubling down on all of the chaos and destruction that she's caused. So I think that ad lays it out beautifully. It lays out the fact that President Trump's a fighter and that these are the solutions to fix the problems that Kamala Harris created. Yes, absolutely. I'd also like to ask you because he, I mean, with, with the election so close here, so much at stake, I think a lot of Americans are finally waking up and jumping on the Trump train if they weren't already. And that includes people in deep blue states like New York and California. What do, what do you make of this, out, this, really, this outpouring of support coming from people in deep blue states behind enemy lines? Well, I think a lot of people from deep blue states that have been living under the worst of Democrat policies don't want those Democrat policies going nationwide. They don't <laughs> want to suffer even more from those policies in Washington, D.C. People in uh, California, New York, often know the worst of the tax hikes that they have in those cities. They know the worst of the defund the police Democrats. They know the worst of the woke education they're trying to force in a lot of those states. And they don't want those. They want common sense back in the White House. That's why I think we're also seeing traditional Democrat constituencies supporting President Trump at levels that we've never really seen before, or at least in a generation for a Republican because President Trump has that message for all Americans. And it also shows that he's expanding the electoral map. I mean, we see poll after poll after poll showing that it's not just these traditional seven battleground states that are in play here. President Trump is expanding those number of states. He's going to new states. People from across the country are joining this movement. And if you live in one of those deep blue states, it's important to remember, there's also House races on the line here, too. President Trump needs to be sent back to the White House, but we also need that Republican House of Representatives, that Republican Senate. So make sure you get, get out and vote. Yes, absolutely. We have six down ballot races here in California and California, surprisingly enough, actually helped Republicans gain a majority in the House. So for all the people who are living in New York, California, some other blue state, maybe Nevada or New Mexico, trust me, your vote matters. It's extremely important. Please make your plan, cast your ballot. I've already done so. There's just too much at stake and it can make a difference, if not for you locally, but also at the national level and making sure that Trump has all the tools he actually needs to govern. Because when he came into office the first time, he had backstabbing rhinos, he had uniparty establishment types, people constantly undermining him, the Russia collusion hoax. He was fighting for his life while trying to run a country. So certainly we need to see things be different this time. So I'd like to ask you about that as well because he's surrounding himself with a very interesting group of people. RFK, Tulsi Gabbard, Tucker Carlson, Elon Musk, Vivek Ramaswamy. What do you make of this? I mean, do you think that he's really preparing for a, for a real battle this, this time around? 
Well, I think the big, one of the biggest takeaways is that, is that it's a unifying ticket here that he has. It's a unifying agenda. Yes. We're talking about people that ran for president as Democrats not too long <laughs> ago, supporting President Trump. That's the type of unity he is bringing. That's the type of unity he is offering. And I think that extends to things like the Teamsters members, for example. The fact that the Teamsters did not endorse a presidential candidate for the first time in decades, they traditionally endorse Democrats, is a major sign of this. But if you look at the rank and file, you have 60% of Teamsters members supporting President Trump. Those are unheard of numbers for a Republican. And that is, again, another example of the unity President Trump is offering. So when the Democrats get out there and say President Trump is a divider, that is entirely false. They are the dividers. They are the ones that are leveling smears and lies against President Trump. President Trump is uniting Americans. He's uniting Democrats, independents, Republicans. They're all coming together to say, we got to save this country. Yes, absolutely. And on top of it all, I think even some legacy news outlets are finally waking up because the Washington Post, not going to endorse Harris. The LA Times, not going to endorse Kamala Harris. So obviously anything can happen on election day, but it seems very clear Trump has built a movement. We know what his legacy is. We know what his closing pitch is. And we know that that's the key to unleashing American greatness once again. So Tommy, of course, as always, thank you for your time today. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for having me on and go to swampthevoteusa.com. Make your plan to vote. Make sure your friends and family do too. Absolutely.